Welcome to the next topic that we're looking at in our GCSE physics course, and it's called energy stores. Um, we're starting with lesson one, looking at energy stores and what we call pathways. So uh, the starter at the top, you're just naming as many different types of energy as you can recall from um, any of your previous lessons in key stage three. And then in the PowerPoint, we went on to ask, what is energy? And there are these four statements, and you need to say whether you agree or not, and why. So the first statement is that energy is invisible. Well, what can we say about that? Well, I think, yes, we definitely can agree with that. Because, although food and batteries And other objects have energy, we, it is not possible to separate out the energy. Okay. So we can't say, take some food, we know that that's how we get our energy. We get our energy from eating food. But it's not possible to somehow take apart the food and say, right, well, this is the energy that's inside the food and point to that energy and be able to take it away from the rest of the object. That means that energy, it's invisible, we can't see it, but it also means that energy is always in an energy store so it's always in a form or in an object and we call that the energy store so for example energy is found in food energy is inside uh, an electrical battery so it's inside what we call an energy store the second statement said that energy is needed to make things happen so yes we can agree with that so, for example, without energy from food, living objects cannot grow or continue to function. So you always need energy to be able to do something. And that's true for us as it is for objects. The third one, it says energy cannot be created or destroyed. Yes, this is true. And this is known as, this is called the conservation of energy. And it's one of the most important ideas in physics. There are many, many things that depend on this idea. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. That means that the amount of energy that was present in the universe at the time of the Big Bang is exactly the same as the amount of energy that there is present in the universe now. The total amount of energy hasn't changed. Which brings us on to our last statement. Energy can be transformed to one form from one form to another. Well, yes, this is also true as, for example, we can use the energy we get from food to do things. For example, move around. So here it's important to realize that we are not causing the energy to disappear. We're not using it up so that it disappears. We're using the energy by transforming it from one form, which it was inside the food, to another form, which we'll see when we start to move around what type of energy store that is. 
Okay, so this is answering what energy is. Let's take a look at some of the energy stores. So, first of all, we had to restate what our conservation of energy is. Energy can be described as being separated into different stores. It cannot be created or destroyed. but can be transferred or transformed from one store into another. So as I said before, the thing to realize is that the total amount of energy that there was at the very start of the universe is exactly the same as the total amount of energy now. None of the energy has been disappeared. No extra energy has been created. It's just been changed from one store to another. So we have some images here for, elastic, uh, for energy stores and we're going to try and decide what type of energy store do we have here. Well here in this first picture we have a spring. Springs are things that can be stretched. So this is a form of elastic potential energy. Here we have a roller coaster. And the way that a roller coaster works is that it brings people up high into the air. So when it's up high like this, we have a store of gravitational potential energy. And we're going to see how that's then transferred into another form. Inside fireworks, what we've got inside fireworks are chemicals that when we set them on fire, they either explode and create lots of light and sound. So inside here we have chemical energy, and this is the same form of energy that we find inside our food or inside electrical batteries. Here we've got a fire, and this is a source of thermal energy. Here we have a picture of some race cars. So the race cars are moving. So this is kinetic energy. That is anything that's moving has kinetic energy. And then we have this one, the nuclear bomb. That's a very special type of energy. It's called nuclear energy. Uh, then we've got an electrical storm, thunderstorm, and that's from electrostatic energy and then the final one a magnet has got magnetic energy then in the next task you needed to summarize this information that was also shown on the PowerPoint the different types of energy stores that you need to know a description of each of them with an example so you have this table to fill in um, and you could use the PowerPoint, all the information is in the PowerPoint that you need to be able to fill in the types of energy stores that you need to know. Now, you need to know the names of all of these types of energy store, what they mean and some examples of these. Uh, be careful when you have gravitational potential and elastic potential. The name is gravitational potential. You have to include both words in the name. Okay, so moving on, we said that energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be transferred. So we're looking at how this works, how do we transfer energy from one type of energy store to another type of energy store. So the first thing we have to say is, we have to understand this idea of what we call a system, and a system means something particular in physics. So a system is an object or a group of, object, of objects and suggests some ways in which an energy could be transferred to a system. So what's happening is when something in the system changes, 
there's a transfer of energy. So if there is a change, in the system there is a transfer of energy so let's think about what that means a concrete example so here i've got the pen that i'm writing with it's sitting on the book at the moment and one of the energy stores that we looked at earlier was gravitational potential and gravitational potential is whenever an object has energy because it's up high. So if I lift this pen up, so it's now up closer to the camera, it's above the book. This now has got gravitational potential energy, but the energy hasn't been created. So there has been a transfer of energy from some other energy store into the gravitational potential energy of the pen. And we can see that it's got this energy because the gravitational and potential energy allows it to do something. It's not a very exciting thing, but it allows it to fall whenever I let go of it. So the gravitational potential energy allows us to move this object, which is what happens when I let it go. So we need to think about the ways in which energy can be transferred whenever there's a change in the system. And there are four ways that this can happen inside a inside a system and these are called the pathways so we need to complete this table and there is a powerpoint that has this in the powerpoint there is a slide that has this information on it so you should make sure you have this information copied so this is the information that's in the powerpoint we've got these four ways that energy can be transferred mechanically electrically by heating and by radiation so if you go back to my example i have I moved the pen up high so it got gravitational potential energy. How did the transfer of energy happen? Well, it can't have happened electrically because we don't have an electric circuit here. There was no heating happening and there is no radiation. There is no electromagnetic or sound waves that cause this pen to move. Why did the pen move? It moved because a force acted on the object. I picked it up. And the pen moved. So that meant the energy transfer was a mechanical energy transfer, which is how the pen ended up with gravitational potential energy. At the bottom of the page, you're asked to describe how energy is transferred when a pot of water is boiling over a fire. So we're looking at what's happening here. So there is thermal energy in the fire is transferred by heating from the hot fire to the cooler water. So this is energy transfer by heating. This happens by conduction, convection, and radiation. These are things that we're going to learn more about later. Those are the three ways that the heating transfer can take place. So how is energy transferred? It's transferred through heating. And the three ways that the heating transfer can take place is through conduction, convection and radiation. And again, we'll come to look at those. So having turned the page over, we're going to look in a little bit more detail at what's meant by this mechanical energy transfer. So this is where I transferred energy to the pen so that it had gravitational potential energy and work done is the energy transfer that takes place when a force causes an object to move so this is a special word called work done it's what we call that energy transfer the energy transfer that takes place when a force 
causes an object to move. The unit of energy, that is what energy is measured in, is joules. And we show that with a capital J. And this is also the unit whenever we talk about work done. So whenever you come across the word work done, it means exactly the same as energy transfer. The two things mean the same thing. Now there is a, an equation that we can use to work out how much work has been done whenever there's been a force. Remember, I put a force in the pen and lifted it up in order to do the energy transfer, which meant that work was done. And we can use the following equation. Now this is an equation that you must um, that you must learn is one that you have to know. So we have work done, which is measured in joules, is equal to the force applied, which is measured in newtons, multiplied by the distance moved in the direction of the force. That's measured in meters. Now, obviously, that's quite a long thing to have to write out. So we can use symbols. So we use capital W means work done. Instead of saying force applied, we can use the symbol capital F. And instead of saying distance moved in the direction of the force, we can use small s. Note, it is not D for distance. It is small s for distance. Now, we can also write work done with a unit of newton meters. Why? Because we've got newtons here multiplied by meters. So we can use write it like that as well as writing it as joules. Work is also done when an object is stretched or compressed or twisted or bent. So work is always done whenever an object, that we change the shape of an object using a force. Okay, now next part of the pack, you had to do some calculation questions and it's important as always that in these calculation questions, you're showing all the steps of your calculation. So it says a man lifts a mass of 120 kilograms to a height of 2.5 meters. How much work did he do? So we have the mass is equal to 120 kilograms. The height is 2.5 meters. And we want to calculate the work done. Now we know to calculate the work done, we need to have the force that was used so we're going to also have to calculate the force because we've got mass, but we don't have force. Now, in order to calculate the force, the force here is going to be equal to the weight of the person. So weight is equal to mass times gravitational field strength. This is an equation that we learned from the first topic that we covered on forces. And that means that we'll have the weight force due to weight is equal to 120 multiplied by 9.8. So remember, if you haven't been given a number, you can use 9.8 for the force due to gravity. So that gives us an answer of, we've got 120 multiplied by 9.8. So that gives us a force, the weight force is 1176 newtons now this is note here this is where you have to be very careful that you understand the symbols are used to represent words in this case the w here represents weight so here we have weight is equal to 1176 and that is the force that we use force used is equal to the weight to be able to lift it up. So we have the force is equal to 1,176 newtons. Now, when we write out our the next equation to get the work done, a 
Again, I've got W, but this time meaning work done is equal to force times distance. That gives me that the work done is equal to 1,176 multiplied by 2.5. And I put that into my calculator and I get an answer of... 2,940 Newtons. So, a uh, big part of joules. So this is, um, this is the sort of question that would be four or five marks in an exam. Why? Because we had to use two equations to be able to do the question. Um, and I think it's really important that you see how careful we have to be with the symbols. Symbols are me meant to represent words. This equation is saying weight is equal to mass multiplied by gravitational field strength, which I used first of all to calculate the amount of force I have. And then in this case, it's work done is equal to force multiplied by distance. So the symbol W here is for work done. Symbol, symbol W here is for weight. Okay. Okay. So turning the page over, we're looking at four situations and we're trying to decide whether work has been done. So remember, this is all about whether energy has been transferred to an object through a force being applied to the object and causing the object to move. So we have, first example is, a student applies a force to a wall and becomes exhausted. So this is quite easy for people to misunderstand what's happening here. The student becomes exhausted. Okay, so often we can think because somebody becomes tired, they've used a lot of energy, they must have been doing work because they've become tired. Okay, that's because we use work in that sense in everyday English. But we have to ask ourselves the question. The student applied a force to the wall. So when we thought about what work done meant, we had to apply a force to an object. So this one is right. So the force is applied. So remember, work done means a force is applied to an object. But... The wall does not move. So the distance is equal to zero. Therefore, the work done is zero or no work is done. So even though the person became very tired, no work is done in this situation. So every time we talk about work done, we're always thinking about this situation. Work done is the energy transfers that takes place when a force causes an object to move. We need both of these things to be there. A force being applied and the object is moving. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at the other situations. So we've got a book falls off a table and free falls to the ground. So we need to say, is there force and is there movement? Well, is there a force? Yes. The force is due to gravity, is the weight of the book. And is there movement? Yes. The book moves to the floor. Therefore, work is done. The third one. A waiter carries a tray full of meals above his head straight across the room at constant speed. So this is an interesting thing. It's moving at constant speed. So if we imagine, and obviously I'm not an artist, but here's our waiter. He's very happy. He's got his tray full of meals above his head. And he's moving across the room in this direction. 
and he's moving at a constant speed. That means with constant speed, we can say that there is no resultant force. So there is no resultant force because he's moving at constant speed. Also, the tray doesn't move up or down. It hasn't gone higher, it hasn't gone lower. It's above his head all the time. So there is no change in the height. So the force is zero. The movement, yes, there is movement across the room, but in this case, there is no force being applied. So no work is done. Remember, we need both of those things. We need to have a force being applied and there being movement. And then finally, we have a rocket accelerates through space. So for force, we can say it accelerates. So there is a resultant force. Stop that one, that's good. And then in terms of movement, is it movement? Yes, it's moving through space. So we've got both of these, so we can say, yes, work is done. So work is very different. When we talk about work in physics, we mean something very different to whenever we talk about work in everyday life. Work in space, work in physics is always about a force being applied to an object which causes the object to move. And then finally, we need to always remember energy cannot be created or destroyed. So if there's one very important message for you to remember from this lesson, never, ever, ever, ever talk about energy being created or energy being destroyed. It's only ever changed from one form to another. If you say in a question, an answer to a question, you say that energy is created, that's always wrong because energy is never created and it's never destroyed. <laughs>